Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video we're going to go through the new dungeon ranking event, Pawpine Caverns, very hard. You can see here, uh, I got an S+, plus, just under 1.7 mil. I will show you uh, my team setup. Before that, as usual, I will show you the enemy setup though. So, this is what you're looking at here. Um, fire and lightning, only two elements you really need to worry about. As far as sigils, I only really cared about X sigil because you can see here the majority of them are X. Um, so Yuffie here is going to be the like tougher fight. You know, there's always going to be two um, final bosses you can pick from. We will be doing Yuffie in this one for the highest score possible. Um, let's see here. Things to note before we get started is that Elena is harder than you would think she is. Uh, I will kind of go through that in the video, but she does hit really hard. Uh, fire element, physical, and it's no joke. So uh, watch out for her because I can tell you my first run, I thought this was a joke. Then I run into her and she one shots two out of my three people with her first move in the first 10, 15 seconds of the battle. So yeah, be prepared for that. And then Yuffie, uh, this is kind of the same Yuffie that uh, we've always had. Honestly, I what I like about Yuffie, she is strong, but she's able to be debuffed in every meaningful way, so that really makes things easier. Okay, other thing to look out for is there are going to be Aqua Rangdas, and you know from doing the Battle Towers, if you've been doing those uh, starting on like floor 57, things get really ridiculous with them because they buff their magic attack, so you'll always want to kill them first. Okay, enough of that. Let's look at the team. First time I'm using Tifa in a in a high difficulty content instead of Aerith as my healer. And I'm just going to start with her because I think it's kind of the X factor in what made this run successful. You'll notice she does not have much physical or magical attack because she's not really set up to do damage whatsoever. Purely debuffer and healer. We've got lifeguard wraps here. Only five star, so really not impressive. Uh, here, this is kind of the heart and soul of the operation, Omni Strike. Here we have a single use, mid potency, physical attack decrease, uh, 22 seconds long, it sacks a high if necessary, and that is exactly what we need for this. So, we're using the leather gloves as her secondary weapon. Here we have uh, Lightning Breach and Fire Breach, just to help Cloud and Sephiroth get in the maximum amount of damage. Again, her stats just don't really justify her being a damage dealer. So she's just bringing breaches. Here, she's bringing X Sigil Break. Again, the only one I'm focusing on. For sub equipment, this is purely for heal stats. This is purely for heal stats. And this down here is purely for HP because I am going to take a score boost that lowers my HP by 20%, the top end. So I wanted to get, you know, a high enough threshold also. Uh, that Elena fight, she does do a big AoE move that's going to hit for like, I don't even know, like four or 5,000 damage. So you do need to be able to tank that. Um, but that's what we set her up for. Purely debuffing and some heals. That's it. Okay, coming over to Sephiroth. He is our second damage dealer. He's a magic attack. And so uh, we've set him up with Prototype Crimson Blade to do fire damage because we're only worried about fire and lightning. And I'll be honest, he doesn't do a whole lot, but this All Enemies does kind of help in certain battles. Uh, here, I set him up with Nameless. I could have set him up with um, his other, uh, this sword here, the one that, you know, does even more fire debuff. Maybe that's right. I ran it the first time. The problem is it's kind of awkward with 4 ATB trying to get that in and then also get some damage in. So ultimately, and it's also physical attack which kind of make thing, makes things really weird. Uh, so maybe it would have been right to just use this and then use a fire uh, here, a fire materia, and then X sigil boost. Like it looks like this would be a perfect weapon. So experiment with it. I didn't like it when I used it the, the first couple times I ran this. I went with this mostly for HP again, because he needs HP. And since I wanted to do magic attack, uh, I went with that, and then this way I could shove in all magic attack items. So this is magic attack, physical defense, magical attack, physical defense, and then edge wings, just magical attack. So that's kind of what we look like. These are all stat sticks for magic attack. Um, 
nothing nothing really fancy there um here i've got the edge wings training garb just for the extra magic attack uh but i think that there's this would have probably been better to be honest with you and i didn't even use it i just that was just a slip up so if you have that use it i didn't and it still worked out fine uh using thunderland or judgment bolt here with ramu uh just because lightning is the other element and the aoe does help uh, moving over to Cloud, he is our main primary physical damage dealer. I do have the Arcanum official festive garb on him for the extra fire damage. We do have his weapon at OB2. Nothing super crazy impressive. Here we've got Mirasame, OB6. Worked on that for a long time, and that is for the lightning damage. He's really, other than Rairamu, he's the only lightning damage dealer I have. But combined with the lightning breach, it's going to be plenty statistics for physical attack along with an x you know just to have at least one way to break x sigils uh if for it i think that's kind of self-explanatory here and sub equipment um i put this on for hp and physical ability potency it definitely helps since he's doing both fire and lightning uh i figure physical ability potency kind of hits both of those which is again why i have killer hornet as well physical attack and physical ability potency um that way we can kind of make him a little bit more well-rounded. And then here we have Crystal Sword just because the boost fire potency R ability on this weapon is insane. Also, just to note, it is OB5. I've never wishlisted this, not even one time. The game just likes to give me Crystal Sword Zs, so that is what it is. Um, but those are the stats. That's what we have. Uh, that is the team that we are working with here, and yeah it's it's uh i would say 223 combat power i i think that's probably par for the course for most players um even people that are relatively new should probably be within like 20k of this number and i don't think this dungeon should give you too much trouble as long as you have the debuffs uh for physical attack without further ado let's go ahead and get into it all right, so starting off, we're just gonna run down here to the left, pick up this item, and immediately go to the very first symbol boss that we see. And this one's gonna be weak to fire, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna jump on Tifa, fire breach the middle guy, and then just start jamming all of our fire stuff as much as possible. Other than that, Tifa doesn't have a whole lot to do this fight, but it's not really that big of a deal. Just keep fire breach up and keep jamming fire. Um, it's the first fight, so, you know, there's only so much difficulty that can be expected, which is why I've sped this fight up considerably, because there's really just not a whole lot to it. So once we have the first symbol boss down, score of just under 67,000, we're very happy with that, and we will get our first boost. I'll take the score boost here with the max HP reduction rate of 20%. That doesn't seem like it's going to hurt me too much, and 10% boost to score is always welcome in these kinds of things. Come over here, get your key, and then we're going to go straight across the hall and fight the second symbol boss. Now, this one has the Rangdas, so we are going to focus them first. So, they're weak to the lightning. Cloud is going to be the one to kind of clear them. And he's going to go, like, almost immediately into a Sigil Break phase where X Sigil comes in handy again. And so... That's pretty much like the majority of this particular fight. Once you kill the Rangdas, you're kind of in the clear. I mean, because you've got plenty of time to break these sigils and probably should be able to just kill him shortly after the sigil break phase. So again, he's weak to lightning. So this time lightning breach is what we're going to use once we get everybody kind of topped up. And yeah, um, not really again not a whole lot to this boss these first two bosses are just pretty simple and you shouldn't really have too much trouble with them score of 65,000 or just under so we're totally good with that score as well and uh, we get our second boost here here the score boost comes at way too hefty of a cost 40% uh, off of physical and magical that's way too much to take off this early in a dungeon for only a 10% boost for my power level Going with fire potency and fire resist down because fire is going to be the name of the game for the two toughest uh, bosses in this dungeon. 
we get our second key we come down here we get a couple elixirs and then we're going to run down to the second half of the stage now this one right here to the right that's where the final boss is going to be so we're going to skip that for now and ultimately we were going to go right but first we're going to come left and the reason is we want to pick up the fire cocktails to make the elena fight easier so we get those fire cocktails here we run into add-ons those add-ons aren't like super easy but they're not super hard just kill the rangda in the middle and then you should be pretty good there's another add-on fight here which is kind of unfortunate because we don't need it but it is what it is now going into the elena fight i'm not taking any precautions or i'm taking all the precautions sorry so fire cocktail on cloud because i want to kill her as fast as possible i do not want this to turn into a long fight which is why we're doing her third instead of fourth so here we go first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to immediately fire breach her just so she takes the most damage now she started that move let's get started i've interrupted for now with the combo she can't be debuffed by somersault i'm just doing it for max damage and here i should have saved judgment bolt it wasn't necessary as it turns out it doesn't do enough damage and even the buff that it's giving hellfire here just not worth it i should have saved it i would advise you to probably save it immediately switch stances though because that move that ring closes very quickly and you'll notice she throws this grenade okay it does like 1600 to 2300 depending how much physical defense you have however if you don't block i can tell you it's gonna hit you for probably like 4,000, and that is going to be really bad it's the other reason that we're doing her third by the way i made that fight look much easier than it is i can tell you it can get out of hand very easily so anyway we're doing her third also because we're going to take another score boost after this and you don't want to have all your stuff debuffed before you go into her here lightning potency minus 40 is just too big of a thing to take uh, because we only have one lightning damage dealer and the next symbol boss needs lightning damage so i didn't feel like i could take the score boost there so we just took the magic defense buff uh here I'm going to take a look at the items and i thought about using a summon charge on sephiroth because he has ramu i should have held ramu that's what I should have done. I didn't. Ultimately, though, I didn't want to use the extra item, and, and I just didn't think it was worth it. So I didn't. Uh, could have used maybe a Thunder Cocktail on Cloud. That probably wouldn't be the worst here, uh, especially if I'd have taken the score boost, right? Because if I'd have taken the score boost, I could have used the Lightning Cocktail, and it would have basically negated it. Again, we have Rangdas, the second fight with them, aside from the add-on fight kill them first right you do not want to take that aoe water dance to the face uh he's going to queue up tail laser pretty early on here you should have just enough time to kill the rangdas switch your stance to defense tail laser is going to hit for like 1600 or so and it's other than that it's really no big deal now obviously if we had taken that score boost we would have reduced magical and physical defense so that might hit for like 2k or so uh, still not really anything to worry too much about other than this uh, we're just going to keep switching stances letting him tail laser we're gonna you know lightning breach and then just smack him with cloud as many times as we can here he puts up a, a short sigil break I mean, where it doesn't take a lot of sigils to break it. You have actually plenty of time. Um, here, there's not a whole lot to do with Tifa, so I'm debuffing him and stuff just to kind of preserve, you know, whatever max HP thresholds and stuff that I have uh, because I've got the Lightning Breach on him and everything. So this boss, ultimately, I don't think should be that big of a, a challenge. It's kind of like the second boss. Once you kill the Rangdas... I think you have plenty of time to DPS him down before anything bad happens. Uh, here, we're going to take the score boost again. Now, obviously, the worst part of this is the fire potency minus 40%, but I had just assumed, and I should have assumed in the last fight, if I use a cocktail, I'll be fine. Here, I check just to make sure I haven't skipped a symbol boss. 
it never hurts to just go ahead and double check, especially when you know you're at the end, because if you skip one, that's going to kill your score. All right, time to use some items. I'm going to use two supplements, one on Cloud, one on Sephiroth, just to make sure that they have a high enough max HP threshold to survive any shenanigans from Yuffie. Fire Cocktail on Cloud, and with that, I will be good to go. I'm just giving one last check through my, or my items. But uh, yeah, I don't think I need anything else. Everything seems good, so we're going to go ahead and get in here. And I will tell you, I should have been a little bit more patient in the very beginning. Just a tad bit more patient. I could have done more damage and ultimately closed this fight out faster. So I get, I immediately just go into the combo. And the reason I shouldn't have done that is, one, I should have Fire Breached Yuffie, because then Hellfire would do more damage. And if I would have paid attention to Sephiroth's uh, gauge, I would have seen here that he was one move away from getting Ramu. So those two things ultimately would have probably been like another, I don't know, 25k damage, maybe 30k even uh, to Yuffie, which would have just been nice to have. Uh, other than that, it is good to use those, though, in the beginning to take out the add-ons because they buff their physical attack and you really don't want to have to deal with them hitting you alongside her. Uh, this move here, though, by the way, her first Landscaper move, it hurts. That was 2,500 damage, and that's with mid-potency physical attack debuff. Immediately after, though, she gives herself the mega attack buff, and we are going into Omni Strike. That's going to be, like the most used thing as long as she has uh, any amount of attack up here. So we just keep Omni striking and we're going to play this game for quite a while where she's going to continually buff herself and we're just going to keep debuffing her with Tifa and playing this, you know, kind of balancing act, trying to make sure that she's not just going to slap us down. Uh, she goes into an X sigil break. You've got plenty of time uh, here. I meant to click Omni Strike. It, I misclicked Healing Waves. I did not mean to heal Healing Waves there. And you can tell here I switched stances and Healing Waves again. I had thought that I had Omni Strike and realized here that I didn't. So she has way more attack than I wanted her to have. So just pay attention to that. There is kind of a lot going on, or it can feel that way in your mind, right? Uh, because you know you've done so well up to this point and you just need to do well one more fight so yeah nerves kind of can play a factor and that's what happened there um, that's kind of why you know I didn't notice Sephiroth's gauge I, I uh, panicked in the very beginning of the fight I misclicked a skill later on it's not the end of the world but just kind of explaining to you some of the uh, mistakes that I made and maybe it can help you when you do your run you know, avoid those or do things just a little sharper, a little cleaner, and maybe you'll get just a little bit better of a score as a result. Uh, here, you know, just kind of getting as much damage as possible, and I see this bloodbath come up. I do not want to see what that's about. <laughs> I see that Sephiroth has Judgment Bolt, and she's close enough. So, there we go. We take her down, and at the end of the day, we never really came that close to dying. I'm quite certain I could have taken that other uh, score boost and done better and I would have normally done that but I don't have a whole lot of time this morning and I want to get this video out and I don't want to have to delay it by like five hours so this is what we're here with and this is the score that we got uh, hopefully this helped you let me know in the comments uh, if it did or you know if kind of need me to try to run this with a weaker team I would be interested in trying to do that later uh, subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thank you for watching.